Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking about 4chain. Now this is a project that I've been following for some time now. Now I'm going to be talking about where I believe the price of their token, the Rune token, is going to be going based on both fundamentals and also technical analysis, giving you maybe a little price prediction at the end. So let's just jump straight into it. Now I could be talking about this for an hour or two, uh, if you could actually watch a video that long. I'm gonna cut this down as short as I possibly can. In a nutshell, guys, it is basically a decentralized exchange. So from fundamental type perspective, why do we want to use a decentralized exchange? Now, when I first ever got into crypto, I was using this exchange over here. You can see eToro. And the great thing that I felt about eToro was the fact that say if I lose my funds or something goes wrong, I lose access and I need to sort of renew my passport or something, there is somebody in charge that you can contact and ask them for some help and you know who that person is or at least you know the website or something that you can contact. You know there's somebody at the other end of customer support that is going to be able to help you out on their centralized exchange. The difference of course with a decentralized exchange isn't just that there's not any specific person in charge, it's that the group of people that are running the show are all anonymous just like Satoshi Nakamoto. So there's not necessarily anybody that you can go to and ask for assistance. However, the good thing about this is the fact that there is no manipulation from big financial institutions and government entities and all that that can clamp down on the market and start to manipulate it by bringing in regulations. Now, of course, with Binance, we don't even know who they are and where they are. I, they were originally in China, then they went to Japan, then they went to Malta, then the Cayman Islands, and now apparently they're not in the Cayman Islands. We've got no idea where Binance are actually based, yet now you have to be doing KYC for Binance. Now the problem with all of this is of course that all of your data is going to be getting stored on some database either with Binance or some other third party service and just like PlayStation and Visa, Sony, just everybody, even the Pentagon over in America has been hacked at some point and whoever these big data warehouses are which are storing all of your KYC data, when they get hacked and they will do, those hackers with pure criminal intent can then take all of your proof of identity type information and either sell it on to more dodgy criminally minded type people or they can use it themselves to just go out and open up like Coinbase accounts and other accounts in your name, do some money laundering and then land you in a whole heap of trouble. It is a real hassle, something that can be avoided completely with no KYC and decentralized exchanges. And that, that was just one of the points. Another really big point is that with regulation, is basically governments then controlling the crypto markets. The governments cannot control Bitcoin. Bitcoin is completely decentralized, but what they can do is regulate and control the exchanges, the places where you're gonna be able to actually use that cryptocurrency. Now, if they can do that, then they can start to bring out laws and regulations. And these laws and regulations will obviously move markets and change prices. While most government people may not actually benefit from this, there will be certain financial institutions which will put loads of money into lobbying governments to bring out certain regulations which will benefit them financially. They are not the first decentralized exchange. You could, of course, use a Uniswap, or also you could use PancakeSwap and a bunch of other of these decentralized exchanges which already exist. So what's the big deal with Four? Why is Four different? Four is different because for the first time, you're not just trading Ethereum tokens or Binance chain tokens. You can exchange anything for anything, including Bitcoin. They do this by using liquidity pools. I first came across the notion of liquidity pools in this book here, 
by uh, Scott Patterson. This is Dark Pools, the rise of AI trading machines and the looming threat to Wall Street. Now I've got to tell you, if you have not read this book or got the audio book, I definitely recommend you do because if you're into crypto, this gives you a really great insight into the whole stock market era and how that came about and how it became digitized. And of course, now we're moving from stock market and Forex and everything into crypto. You can see the whole thing happening all over again. It's just a great book to read and gives you a real good solid understanding. I'll leave a link for it down below in the description of this video. So with these four liquidity pools, this is how it works. So they have their own token, which is called Rune. And you have 1 million Rune over here in one liquidity pool. And maybe they have a Bitcoin liquidity pool here. And they both have to balance. They have to have the same equal amount. And then over here somewhere, we have another pool. So we have a Rune account here, again, with 1 million Rune. And then the equivalent value of Ethereum and say you want to change Bitcoin to Ethereum, it's kind of like the XRP X Rapid system where they would take Japanese yen and US dollars and rather than doing the old SWIFT system where it goes for a whole bunch of different banks to get there, all they're doing with XRP is taking the US dollars, trading to XRP, sending the XRP and then in Japan, trading those XRP back into Japanese yen. All of the pools can be seen actually here. So this is on 4chain.net. You can go straight over to pool and see all the different coins that you can uh, exchange here. So we've got uh, Aave, Litecoin, Wi-Fi, SNX, Alpha, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, BNB, BUSD, USDT, Ethereum. I mean, there are loads and loads and loads and loads of pools. You could change a lot of different coins. But the fundamental thing is that you have to understand is unlike Uniswap, which is pretty big these days, this is the first one where you can actually exchange Bitcoin to Ethereum, to some Bitcoin smart chain contract. And, you know, basically any chain can be swapped for another one. So four is the first ever one that does this. Recently, you may have noticed this guy here. This is Jack Dorsey, the CEO of whatever he likes to call himself of Twitter. And in his uh, Twitter description here, he just has Bitcoin. He's just had this for quite some time now. So he's a big Bitcoin fan. But you'll see in his name, he is also using this little lightning bolt. Now, what could that be? Down here, 27th August, we've determined blah, 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 blah. Direction, help us build an open platform to, to create, create a decentralized exchange for Bitcoin. This is Jack Dorsey, the owner, the founder of Twitter, talking about creating a decentralized exchange. Now, I fully 100% believe that this is the main direction of all those innovators in the crypto field, which have been working on all these cryptocurrencies for years and years and years now, developing the technology, now seeing all of that getting stolen away from regulators. I think this is going to be the main focus of development in the crypto sphere right now is going to be decentralized exchanges. This is encouraging to see very telling determination. Basically, they're talking about Jack here and saying, P.S. Thanks for adding the little lightning bolt to your name. It suits you. Now, I believe that not only is for a really great new technology, it's completely decentralized. We don't know just like Satoshi Nakamoto, we don't know who exactly is behind it. In fact, it could actually be Jack Dorsey. We would never ever know. I do not believe that it's just gonna be one solo decentralized exchange and everybody's gonna use that one exchange. I think it's really more fundamental. It's like the technology which can then be used by a bunch of different exchanges, which will all be able to use those same liquidity pools and create their own decentralized exchanges, their own websites. Kind of like if you go to Pirate Bay, you may be able to access Pirate Bay directly, or you may be in a country where you can't and then you have to use a proxy and go to some sort of proxy site with a different domain name, but it all runs from this same centralized or decentralized database. And every time governments go out to try and shut down one website, you know, 10 more different Pirate Bay websites pop up. And this would be the same thing with this decentralized exchange system set up. We're all running on all these different nodes in all these different countries. There'd be no way for any one government to just shut this whole system down. It will run anywhere in the world. 
I know it all sounds great and you probably want to buy some four, you want to buy some rune tokens right now and we'll get into just when you may want to be buying those in just a second uh, but there is kind of the elephant in the room so to speak right now here for if you had a look over here you'll see that the current volume of assets uh, being traded being used here on the four is currently zero okay and that is because they recently had a bit of an attack on the current system it is of course a system which is being developed it's not like a finished product just yet it was live however somebody decided to come on the network and steal a bunch of coins from those liquidity pools that i was just talking about just a couple of million they did point out that they could have stole everything if they had wanted to, but it was kind of like what they call a white hack attack. So it's somebody was just trying to prove a point rather than actually steal everybody's money. So there has been some problems and you can see down here as audits continue, the issues are being found and fixed. Full chain is growing stronger by the day. MCCN is inevitable. Obviously they will be bringing back the full chain and the ability to exchange those tokens and actually use it. That will be coming back, but right now it's pretty much all down. But those setbacks could be very, very nice for you because those setbacks have set back the price as well. Right now you can see four is currently under $10. It actually went from 20 all the way down to $3. It's, uh, it's 3x, you might say since then, it's uh, back up over nine right now, went over 10. Um, back when this was about, I don't know, what was it 10 cents or something? One million rune you could have got for $100,000. Um, right now it's gonna cost you about $10 million to get one of those runes. So if you had invested 100,000 when Rune was about 10, 10 cents, you would have turned 100,000 into $10 million. In fact, not so long ago, that would have been over $20 million. And right now you can pick it up again. We've had a bit of a dip due to these problems and it's currently still under $10 right now. Now, I don't know if you actually wanna invest in Rune, like long term, or maybe you just wanna actually use the technology once they've built it. I think it's probably gonna be a good idea just to have a little bit on standby. Um, I wouldn't wanna go all in on Rune and don't buy anything else. So the yellow line that you see here, this is the 120 day moving average. Uh, we've got the green and the red line. If you've followed some of my videos before, you'll know that I tend to buy whenever it goes underneath the green line and I start selling off, taking some profit when it's above the red. So like just recently up here, here, it's been above the red in fact this was above both these red lines and if you know the thin red line is the one that you just want to just get out the market and sell everything at that point because that is very over the top now if you want to get yourself this little setup to go on your own charts all you need to do is hit this little thing up here somewhere or maybe it's that side and uh, you'll see the video where i go over how it is that you want to one use this little template and also how you can actually get it and import it into your own charts anyway as we look into the technical analysis now we could draw up a little Fibonacci level there from that one you can see we came down to the 618 level there and then we've came up here again from there and we've already from that point been below the 0.38 so possibly a bit of a reversal you could be looking at it at it come down however if it does come down I mean, where is it gonna go? So here we've got the 120 day moving average. You can see it's resistance here, broke through the resistance there, couldn't come back under it here, come down for a double dip here. Is that gonna be enough strong, strong enough resistance to hold it up above this 120 day line? Um, I'd say as the market in general is beginning to pick up steam right now, I don't know if it's gonna fall down below that 120 day moving average line. If it does, it will probably come down here to the 50 and bounce off of that, which will probably be in and around these levels here at about seven and a half dollars. For me personally, if you're just looking to buy a little bit of rune right now, just to make sure that you've got some, buy some at nine dollars. It's under $10. It'll probably be going up in value 
over the next few months anyway in line with Bitcoin and Ethereum. But it's not all about Bitcoin and Ethereum only. There is all of these other coins as well. We've got this Dodo, Wi-Fi, it's kind of like Bitcoin uh, price. SNX, that could go up quite significant. Aave as well. Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, maybe not. Um, Hedgic, I don't even know what that one is. That's completely new to me. Then the coins in those liquidity pools, which are matching the, the Rune tokens, those would need to go up as well in parallel to sort of balance everything out. So I think in general, you should probably would be with Rune um, outperforming Bitcoin relatively easily. This is coming out in October, so this is going to be a wallet where you can store all of your four tokens as long as, as well as a bunch of other stuff which is getting created as well. This is going to be some sort of loan type thing where they want to do away with banking so that everybody can then have their banking on the four network and get loans and a bunch of other stuff. And this is basically a IPO or an ICO. They're, they're trying to raise some money here and for me, I don't like the idea of giving money to projects which haven't actually produced anything at all yet. Okay, they're just asking for money. They're coming out here with an idea, hoping that you're going to give them some cash. Uh, I think I'd rather just wait to actually see them come up with a viable product before I'm going to put any money into BNPL. But I'm showing you this not because I think that's going to be good and you want to put some money into that, but because you can see that there is an ecosystem here which is growing. There's lots of developers which are looking to develop products on the four network. This is just like Ethereum or Bitcoin when it first came out. Developers are lining up to grow this ecosystem and build other sort of platforms, other things on top of fall. And I think fundamentally that is very, very important. So that is it basically for today. If I'm going to give a prediction, I would say at least, at least $50 for the rune token by the end of this year. So at least 5x and just before we go on this video and end it, I just want to thank all of you guys which are in the Mutru Ninja community over here on the Telegram group. Uh, yesterday I was asking just what we should be doing with the website over the next week or so. And it seems that 47% of you want to add all of the coins on Binance rather than just the 50 which is currently available. When I say that, if you don't know what we do, basically we've got a whole bunch of different uh, tools which I've built really for myself originally in, in crypto. It's a bunch of different modules here that you have in the masters area. Uh, one of the most popular things, one of the main reasons people sign up and join Mutri Ninja is to access the trading bot for automated trading. Just yesterday, we updated these uh, images here for the dogs. These are the dogs which run your little bots, all decentralized bots, so that we do not touch your API keys or anything like that. You can just have complete control yourself. And you never know, maybe one day we may even be able to find a way to actually link this up to the four network and be able to have a decentralized bot system like what we've got. And you can trade on a decentralized exchange. That would be absolutely epic. So really, really cool. That is all I have to say today. I just wanted to thank everybody in the mutual community just for giving me some guidance there and just to let me know that it just certainly seems that a lot of people really want access to all of the coins on Binance rather than just the 50 that we picked. So that's what we're going to be working on this week. We will be looking for the end of the week to be able to add that in as a feature so you can pick any coin that you want. That is it for me for this week and I'll see you all again in the next video.